very good uh, afternoon, Excellency, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our interview uh, program this week. And today we will discuss on the topic regarding the uh, current situation in Myanmar and the new election rule imposed by the uh, military uh, junta. And as well as uh, we will focus on Indonesia's stand as, as the ASEAN chair on this matter. And uh, to, for today, we are very honored to have uh, Dr. Desmond Loy, uh, professor at the Panyasas uh, University and the conflict analyst as our guest speaker for today's uh, discussion. So a uh, greeting, uh, uh, professor, for uh, your uh, presentation today and uh, welcome back to the uh, program. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yep. Uh, thank you. And uh, without further uh, delay, I would like to kick off our discussion with the first question. So, uh, given the Myanmar current situation, uh, do you do you think the political stability can be maintained at a reasonable level compared to, to the beginning of the cold, uh two years ago in uh, 2021? Please, the doctor. Okay. Well. Um, political stability maintained. Well, I think the last time there was political stability in Myanmar was at about 3 a.m. on the 1st of February 2021. It was the morning that the NLD majority government, who had just won the 2020 election with a landslide, uh, were about to form government. And at 4 a.m., uh, the military of Myanmar staged a coup. Um, there was reasonable stability in that there was a majority government. There had been an 11 year journey prior to that in moving towards relative democracy, towards stability, the improvement of the economy, uh, the improvement of law, uh, and the efforts at peace building uh, in relation to the various conflicts that exist through Myanmar. But since the coup, that stability has consistently deteriorated to a stage now where it can't be considered to be politically stable. So um, under the current circumstance, I don't see political stability in Myanmar. So uh, the situation is probably deteriorating as we speak. So uh, thank you, uh, Professor. Um... Uh, moving on, uh, on uh, 27 January 2023, 20, uh, the Myanmar military made a proclamation regarding the election, imposing a new strict laws ahead of uh, the election, uh, which the military initially announced it would hold the descent pools uh, between uh, February and August uh, in 2023 this year. So what, what are those, uh, the, those rules about the election and what does it mean for the people of Myanmar? Okay, yes, well, the, the military junta wishes to hold an election to legitimize its rule. And in order to legitimize its rule, while the majority of people oppose it, it has to exclude the majority of people and the majority of legitimate representatives from the election. So it has announced a law which initially states that uh, a political party, in order to register for national level uh, position must have more than 100,000 members. It must pay a registration fee in the region of um, about $45,500 converted from chat. Um, and it has two months to register that they must have representation in half of the townships of Myanmar, about 165 townships, and it must stand candidates in half of the constituencies. So over 500 constituencies. Now, if we look at the situation that there are about 90 political parties in Myanmar today, and today we can guess, can't be certain, but we can guess that there is only one party that could meet that criteria. And that is the USDP, the party that is aligned with the Tatmadaw, with the Myanmar military. So the purpose of these laws are exclusion of majority representation and to place the USDP uh, in government. And that is very clear. So these laws um, 
are about exclusion. Further, in addition to those particular technicalities, also we know that the government has designated the National Unity Government, its opposition, uh, as terrorist, and it has uh, directed that nobody who is associated directly or indirectly with terrorists, that includes the civil defence forces, can stand in these elections. So the majority of the population tend to support the National Unity Government uh, or support ethnic armed groups that are designated as terrorists by the Tatmadaw. So from that position, again, we're looking at huge level of exclusion from uh, any general election. So can such an election be legitimate? Is the question so okay? Um, in in, in this connection, uh, from from your point of view as an expert on this matter, uh, what do you think about these uh new new rules? And uh, there are many questions uh imposed uh, on on this uh matter. How will it uh, strengthen the military regime grip on its uh, policy? Well, I think that with such exclusionary laws. And with such an objective of excluding the majority of political parties from the election, um, it, it's hard to imagine how the result of such an election could be legitimate. So it's hard to imagine how this would strengthen the position of the junta. Um, certainly, any election under such uh, conditions would probably see the USDP win but probably with a tiny electorate, with a tiny percentage of the population of the electorate voting. We already see that the majority of the population supports a return to relative democracy, a return to peace, uh, and a return to primacy of civil government. So if the military uh, sets up an election using these laws, I don't see that it would be considered as legitimate by the majority of the people in Myanmar or by the majority of states, including the majority of states in ASEAN. So um, in, in relation to, to, to these uh, matter, uh, how, how does the current sets of law imposed by the military regime reflect the Myanmar position on the international state, uh, particularly uh, about the, uh, the junta uh, intention? Well, it's, it's clear that the junta's intention is to develop um, an image of uh, maybe a mirage of legitimacy. Um, and uh, I would say that uh, in light of all these new election rules, that uh, the majority of states and the international stage in general would see these as rules to exclude rather than to include. Majority of countries in developing electoral laws are about e inclusion bringing more people to the table, uh, having better representation. These laws are clearly and will be viewed by the international stage generally as exclusionary laws. And from that point of view, uh, it would uh, leave the situation doubtful as to whether any result from such an election could be seen as legitimate. Um, uh, on the extra, on, on these uh, matter. Uh, is there any reaction from the international community, particularly uh, from the uh, the great powers and uh, other relevant stakeholders? Well, certainly there's a huge amount of media coverage of these rules, uh, as there is a huge amount of media coverage on the escalation of the air war uh, that is being perpetrated by the uh, Tatmadaw now. Big increase in the bombings of civilian targets and the bombings of the headquarters of ethnic armed groups and of civil defense groups, particularly in Chin. Uh, up to now, while ethnic armed groups and the Tatmadaw knew where each other's headquarters were, they didn't attack one each other's headquarters. There was almost a tacit agreement. Well, that's gone out the window, and there have been a huge number of air attacks recently uh, on civilian targets and ethnic armed group and civil defense targets, including hospitals, religious sites, uh, schools. So um, I think that um, perhaps uh, the international media is aware that the current laws are exclusionary, 
that the Tatmadaw is maybe under a lot of pressure militarily. That is why it is increasing its use of air power at the moment, it's provided by Russia and China uh, generally. Um, but that the, this uh, election is getting bad press, certainly in the Western press. Uh, and, um, you know, its legitimacy must be held in doubt. So uh, moving on to uh, the other question. Um, in, in 2023, is the turn for Indonesia to be the rotating chair of ASEAN after the mm. Kingdom of with the last year in uh, 2022. But the Myanmar crisis remains a hot potato for the international community uh, uh, and ASEAN, particularly for Indonesia this year, which will be the next key actor in uh, mediating uh, this crisis. Um, so for last year, uh, as we 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 observed that Cambodia uh, stick to the uh, a mechanism of ASEAN on the five point consensus to uh, assisting in resolving the uh, crisis in Myanmar. So as as the chair of ASEAN this year, how do you will you Indonesia stand on this crisis, and will there be any uh, further mechanism beside the five PC that Indonesia will take? for the re resolution of the Myanmar crisis? Well, you know, Indonesia is looking at the history of the last two years. It's seen the attempts of Brunei that held the chair in 2021, um, which came to nothing. It saw the huge efforts of Excellency Hun Sen and Excellency Prak Sakon as the special envoy of ASEAN for Myanmar. Um, Hun Sen in particular, there were hopes that he would be able to project his win-win concept and provide an off-ramp for Minang Line in the light of the pessimism regarding the long-term outcome for the Tatmadaw's coup. But um, the Tatmadaw didn't take advantage of the possibility of a resolution in working with um, Hun Sen that would have provided a, a positive relationship with China, that would have provided that win-win, would have looked for such a win-win solution. So during the term of Cambodia, there was no opening of the possibility or the space for negotiation. Now, Prime Minister of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, has said that perhaps ASEAN should be speaking to the national unity government, the government in opposition, made up primarily of elected members, NLD people, joined together with uh, the with minority ethnicities. Um, also, he has directed his foreign minister, Maysudi, to open a special office to focus on the Myanmar issue. Now, Indonesia is the economic powerhouse of ASEAN, and what's happening in Myanmar is a destabilizing, destabilizing influence for the economy of ASEAN. And it can be expected that he will take a harder line um, a less collegiate line than Hun Sen attempted to apply. Uh, but, you know, it's hard to be optimistic that he will move any further than either Brunei or Cambodia could. Um, we see no movement in terms of the five principles from the April 2021 summit, the last time Min Aung Lain was present at a summit. And while it's true to say that the Minister for Defence of Myanmar has been invited to the uh, ASEAN Defence Minister's meeting to be held in Bangkok next week, hosted by the USA, incidentally, um, Min Aung Lain is, has not been invited to a summit uh, since April 2021. I do not see Indonesia uh, inviting him to a summit in the near future. And I do not see progress in relation to the five principles. Further, without Min Aung Lain sitting at the table, I don't see how any different mechanism can be developed. Now, the five principles are fairly basic. Um, they are quite innocuous. It involves stop killing, uh, humanitarian assistance, representation, uh, the presence of ASEAN, the support of a special envoy, um, it's hard to get less innocuous than that. And one would have expected that Min Online would have taken the initiative of advancing some of those five principles 
Hun Sen gave him every opportunity to do so. I do not see a new mechanism coming out in the next 12 months. I do not see this conflict being resolved in the next 12 months. We're looking at an escalation of conflict at the moment. We're seeing increased in tax on civilian targets from the Tatmadaw. We're also seeing increased capacity of the civil defense forces. We're seeing horrible incidents of you know, electoral enumerators and surveyors being killed, 13 killed in the last two weeks, uh, associated with preparing the, the census for the election, the electoral rolls. That is horrible. We're seeing uh, the scorched earth policy of the Tatmadaw, and we're seeing a vicious response from the civil defense forces. We also see a situation that in um in, in, in academic terms, the fragility of Myanmar would be rated as a failed state, simply looking at the situation of the legitimacy of the current government. It doesn't have legitimacy. It's not recognized by the majority of the people. It doesn't have control of the economy. It is unable to provide services to the people. And rather than providing security to the people, it is terrorizing the majority of the people. So they are basic criteria used as indicators in relation to the levels of fragility. And as such, Myanmar from 4 a.m. on the 1st of February 2021 may have been considered as a failed state. And that situation hasn't changed. So I don't expect major advance. I don't see any window for negotiation at the moment. Let's hope I'm going to be surprised that Indonesia can find a way forward. Um, and I don't see the majority of ASEAN states recognizing any election that's held under these exclusionary laws. Some countries may do so. You know, media suggests that Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, might be ready to recognize the result of an election if it were to bring political stability, but it will not bring political stability. It will contribute to the ongoing instability. And we're looking at a heightening of the conflict at the same time. So unfortunately, in the short term, I do not have any great expectations because I see no change of heart at the level of the junta, the SAC, and in response, the NUG sees no space for negotiation. So, where I I, I do agree with uh with you, Professor Desmond, uh, that uh without the presence of uh, Min Aung Liang, the leader of the Tatmadaw, uh, there will be no uh, any further significant uh outcome to resolve on this uh crisis. And uh, last but not least, uh, you said that you 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 do not expect much from uh, this year as well. But uh, in a way that uh, Indonesia can do something based on what they uh, have uh, indicated and uh, what they announced, uh, how much uh, can you expect uh, from those, uh, uh, from Indonesia to deal with this uh, crisis and uh, as well as uh, ahead of Indonesia as the chairmanship? Well, in, you know, the, pre the, the Prime Minister of Indonesia is dealing with a huge, range of problems in addition to Myanmar. Uh, and the chairmanship of ASEAN is only one of his burdens at the moment. Um, I think that his uh, speaking in the last few months has been harder line than we've seen from uh, the previous two chairs of ASEAN. However, um, I'm certain that he will strive to maintain the centrality of consensus within ASEAN, as Hun Sen did as Brunei did. Um, and, you know, I don't expect to see bold moves from Indonesia, despite its economic strength, uh, despite its position in ASEAN. Uh, and I think that without a change of heart, without advocacy to Minong Line, to advance the five principles, perhaps, uh, it is difficult to open the door to Min Online to attend the summits. And without Min Online at the summits, there can be no new mechanism or uh, significant progress. So 
in that circumstance, uh, I, I am not very optimistic in relation to the lessening of conflict in Myanmar during the term of Indonesia as the chair of ASEAN. So yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for the explanation. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, our interview today has now come to an end. And once again, I would like to pay my sincere appreciation to uh, Dr. Desmond Malloy for your valuable time and your kind uh, contribution joining us today to provide very uh, profound and precise discussion uh, on this uh, topic. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Professor. And uh, I look forward to talking with you once again in the, on the future episode. Please stay safe and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.